I always had a desire to fulfill a mission, and at the age of 23, I accepted a call for a mission to the Samoan Islands. Prior to my leaving for this mission, Brother Samuel Woolley, a patriarch in Grantsville, gave me a blessing, wherein he said, You shall be given the gift of the language, and shall speak it fluently. Upon arriving in Salt Lake City, Apostle Heber J. Grant set me apart for this mission. And in doing so, he said, among other things, You shall go in peace and return in safety. And you shall be given the gift of the language, and you shall speak it fluently, even as a ready writer. On August the 18th, 1893, I with other elders, boarded the Manawai at San Francisco. And after one week's sailing, we landed at Honolulu, where we remained nine hours, at the end of which time we continued our journey to Samoa, where we landed at the end of another week. The Samoans came out to meet the boat at the Apia Harbor. They had coral and seashells, etc., to sell and I wondered if I could ever learn to talk the language they were using. President George Browning and two elders also came out with a rowboat and took me to Fagali'i, where I stayed about three months, painting the mission house for President Browning, at the end of which time I was sent to Tatuila and was then sent out among the natives. Elder Frank Vancott was my companion. He had been there nearly three years and spoke the language fluently. The first meeting Elder Van Cott held after my arrival was on Thursday, this being a testimony meeting. After singing in prayer, Elder Van Cott arose and said something to the congregation, which numbered about 30 Samoans. They began arising and bearing their testimonies. I did not understand what Elder Van Cott said. Neither did I understand what the natives said, as they arose and spoke in their Samoan tongue. But after about thirty minutes had expired, I felt impressed to arise, and could not resist the prompting. As I have said, I did not know the language, even enough of it to ask for something to eat. But I was just put on my feet and given the gift of the Samoan language, just as Patriarch Woolley and President Grant had said it would be. I started out by quoting the words of John 14th chapter and 6th verse of Revelations, in which he says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to proclaim unto them that dwell on the earth. And in Samoan it was as follows. Then I said, This angel had come and brought the gospel to the earth, just as John the Revelator said he would. He brought it to a young man by the name of Joseph Smith in America. And I have come down here 5,000 miles to tell you about it. I continued to talk in their language for about 15 minutes, telling them about the angel Moroni bringing the Book of Mormon to Joseph Smith, which contained the everlasting gospel. When I sat down, Elder Van Cott arose and said that Elder Barris had spoken in tongues. He said this was the same gift that was enjoyed on the day of Pentecost, when Peter arose and spoke, and they all understood in their own language. The peculiar thing about it was that I could understand then everything he said to them in Samoan, but I could not understand what he said at the beginning of the meeting. The natives came around me and congratulated me, and I could understand them, and I thanked them. I occupied all of the time in the afternoon meeting the following Sunday, speaking their language with the greatest of ease. 
A young man by the name of Mamona came 14 miles from Alao to see if it was true that I had been given the gift of the language, and the gift had remained with me. He spoke no English when he came into our home in Pago Pago and said, Elder Boris, when Jesus was hung on the cross with a thief on each side of him, one of them said, If thou art the Christ, save thyself and us. While the other one rebuked him, saying, When thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. Then Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now Mamona asked me, How was it that this thief was saved and went to heaven without baptism? I told Mamona that paradise was not heaven, but that it was a place of departed spirits, where Jesus went to preach to them while his body was lying in the tomb. I showed him where he told Mary to touch him not, for he had not yet ascended to his Father in heaven. All of this conversation was in the Samoan language. I continued to speak, read, and write the Samoan language from that hour when I arose in meeting until now. And that has been more than 50 years ago. Just recently I borrowed Elder Quinney's Samoan Book of Mormon, and I read it and enjoyed it immensely, as it was not printed in the Samoan language when I was in Samoa. But the language has stayed with me for these 50 years. <laughs>